Hi children. Welcome back to social science class. Hope all of you very well enjoyed your Anam holidays. Right? So in the previous history classes, we had already discussed about the medieval period that is from 8th to 18th century what all economic, social, political and cultural changes have taken place during that period. Now, let us move on to the second chapter of history, New Kings and Kingdoms, which are the new dynasties emerged in India during the 7th to 12th centuries. Which are the new dynasties emerged in India during the 7th to 12th centuries? The Rashtragudas, Gujarat Pradiharas, Palas, Cholas, Chahmanas or Chauhans. Children, please have a look at the map. Which are the new dynasties? The Rashtragudas, Gujarat Pradiharas, Palas, Cholas, Chauhans or Chahmanas. Now, let us move on to what do you mean by the word Samandas? Samandas were rich landlords or warrior chiefs. They remained in different parts of the Indian subcontinent. So, who were Samandas? They were rich landlords or warrior chiefs. The existing kings considered as them their subordinate. Then, what are the services rendered by these samandas to their overlords? They give a lot of gift to their overlords. They remained their presence in the courts and provided them a lot of services in the court. They provided them with military support. And when the Samandas become more powerful and well, they declared themselves as Maha Mandaleshwara or Maha Samandas. When the Samandas gained more power and wealth, they declared themselves as Maha Mandaleshwara or Maha Samandas. That means great overlord of their circle. So, after gaining more wealth and powerful, they began to ascertain their independence from their overlords. The example of the Maha Samandas, they asserted their independence from their overlords are the Rashtragudas, the Pallavas and the Gujarat Pradiharas. Now, let us discuss how did the Rashtragudas became powerful. The Rashtragudas were the subordinate to the Chalukyas of Karnataka. In the mid-8th century, Dendi Durga, a Rashtrakuda chief, he overthrew his Chalukya overlord. He performed a religious ritual, Hiranya Garba, with the help of Brahmanas. Hiranya Garba is a Sanskrit word meaning golden bomb. At that time, it was considered that the sacrificer will get rebirth after performing this religious ritual. That is, he will become a Kshatriya even though he was not a Kshatriya by birth. So, how did the Rashtragudas become more powerful? The Rashtragudas were subordinated to the Chalukyas of Karnataka in the mid-8th century, 
Dendi Durga, a Rashtraguda chief, performed a religious ritual known as Hiranyagarbha with the help of Brahmanas and he asserted his independence and established Rashtraguda Empire. Other examples of Samandas asserted their power and independence were Kadamba Mayura Sharman and Gujara Pradihara Harish Chandra. Kadamba Mayura Sharman established the Pallava Kingdom and Gujara Pradihara Harish Chandra established the Gujara Pradihara Empire. Both of them established their dynasties in Karnataka and Rajasthan respectively. Now, let us discuss what titles did the king adopt. Most of the kings, after asserting their power, they adopted high-sounding titles. They adopted titles such as Maharaja Adiraja and Tribhuvana Chakravarti. What do you mean by Maharaja Adiraja? The great king or overlord of king. Then what do you mean by Tribhuvana Chakravarti? That means lord of the three worlds. In spite of these claims, these kings shared their power with the Samandas, the peasants and with the Brahmanas also. Then, what are the sources of income for the functioning of this empire? Most of the income they were collected from the peasants, the cattle holders and from artisans. They were compelled to surrender a part of their produce to the king. And at the same time, they collected some revenue from the traders also. And what all purposes these sources of income they used for? Most of the income they collected used for the establishment of the king's palaces or to finance king's establishment for the construction of temples and forts and to engage war with neighboring countries and also to assess land and land roads. So all this income they collected used to finance the king's establishment, construction of temples Faults at the same time to fight war and also to assess land and land roads. And who were engaged with the collection of this revenue? Most of the people who were recruited for the collection of revenue were the close relatives of kings. These posts were given by hereditary. All the people who were rendering this service should be very sincere and honest and at times they have to render their service in the army also. So we had discussed about which are the dynasties emerged in India during the 7th to 12th centuries and how did the Samandas assert their power and all. Then Later, we have to discuss what all things were done by this or which are the rulers who conquered the country during this period and how did Cholas rise to power and their administrative policies all. All these things we can discuss in your next class. Okay, thank you. Thank you children.